Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you my sweet treat sloping box. Um, it's kind of a cute shape really um, and I'm using beautiful lemon lime twist. This is actually my last A4 sheet of lemon lime twist cardstock and it is retiring soon so make sure that you get your stack of it soon because once it's gone it's gone. Um, I love the ombre ribbon, I really do think it's so pretty. Um, so I'm going to be working with Calypso, Calypso Coral today and obviously using that ombre ribbon. Um, I just love it. I think it's so pretty and I hope there's going to be some more of it in the new catalogue. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. And I'm not very good at being patient, but hey, I have to wait for that. So um, it might look slightly technical. It really isn't. Um, the original box um, idea I actually got off Crafty Caroline Creates. Um, I have altered mine slightly because I wanted it to be slightly deeper. So I have altered mine slightly, um, but the basics are the same. And inside I have a couple of boxes of little mini, oops, little mini Smarties. So um, these are just perfect um, to give us a little treat and they make a lovely noise as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how to make it. So. To start off with, you will need a sheet of cardstock that is six and three quarters by ten and a half inches. Now, I'm going to apologise, I don't have the centimetres. I have sat for probably a good half an hour or more trying to work out the centimetres and I just couldn't get it into my head. So I'm really sorry to my followers who do like things in centimetres, but this was just in the too hard to do box, I'm afraid. So it is just inches for this one. So this is six and three quarters by ten and a half and you, as I, you will see on this one, um, if you want to stamp your cardstock then this is the time to stamp it. I've already done it because trust me it took me a good five ten minutes to do this um, and as you can see I've used the really cute sweetest thing stamp set. Um, and I've just used this single sweetie here, you could use the lollipop, you could you could use any collection of these images really um, but I just went with this one which is probably the smallest one out of all of them but that's just me isn't it I always pick the harder one and so then we need to score so I'm going to bring in my scoring board for this today actually which I know I don't get out very often I have had to dust it off <laughs> so um, start off with them on the short side we are going to be scoring at one and a half inches, three and three quarter inches, and six and a quarter inches. We are then going to turn it, doesn't matter which way, um, sorry it does matter which way, we're going to turn it anti-clockwise, um, so your thin strip is now across the top, and we're going to score at two and a half inches, five inches, seven and a half and ten inches so you now have this grid pattern going on so you should now have across the top a thin piece and down the right hand side a thin piece okay so we're going to turn it 180 degrees completely so we now have the thin score line down the left and the thin one across the bottom okay put this back on your scoring board because we're now going to do some partial scoring so on your top panel down to this first score line here that's as far as we're going to score okay so we're going to score at one inch down to that score line two and a half inches just down to that score line three and a half five six seven and a half, eight and a half, and ten. Okay, so if you can see, can you see them? There we go. So you've now got a multitude now. What did you see better? Ah, there we go. So you've now got a multitude of score lines across this panel. Okay, so we'll take that scoring board out of the way and then we are simply going to fold and burnish all of our full score lines so the short and the long score lines that we made we're just going to fold and burnish those and this project is quite important that those burnished lines 
are really quite tight and done nicely because it makes all the difference to your finished project. Okay, so we've now scored all of those lines. First thing we're going to do now is get our scissors and across the bottom now, which is where those partial score lines were, you see that way? So they're now at the bottom. So we're going to cut up the very first one that you did and cut it away. So you have that. The next time, the next one, as you can see, you've got your full score line and then you've got two little score lines either side, just here and here. We're going to cut up those ones. So we're going to cut down the partial score lines to that horizontal score line and then we're going to cut it away completely. Okay. And then we're going to do exactly the same for all the rest. So you cut in either side of your um, vertical score line. Had a moment then. Either side, and then we're cutting it away. So what you're actually getting is a little tab that's half way between those ones if that makes any kind of sense. I'm hoping it does. I know that lovely people comment on my videos and say that my instructions are clear. <laughs> when I start saying stuff like this I truly wonder if actually it is clear or if you're just being very kind. So right at the very end obviously we've got one and then we've got this extra and we're just going to cut that away too. So you're left with that at the bottom. Okay. So we're now going to turn it again so that we've got our thin strip across the bottom and on the left hand side we're cutting away the small square and the long strip all the way down now to the second horizontal score line and we'll cut it away. Okay. So then we're going to cut down all of the vertical score lines past that first small one and all the way down to the second. Okay, so we've now cut these all into sections. So the next thing then, again, remembering that you've got this little skinny bit on the left here. So on the first one, the top skinny panel, we're just cutting some wedges. So then we're going to tuck that under. The second one, we're going to cut maybe about an inch or so off. And then we're going to cut wedges either side. The third one, we're actually going to cut away completely. And the fourth one, Again, we're going to cut around about an inch off and cut some wedges. Okay, so we now have this effect going on. Now, this one that you've cut off, you might want to hang on to it because you could always use it for your punch here to decorate the top. So if you want to hang on to it for that, then by all means do. So this is what you should have looking at you now. Now what you need to do is grab hold of your ruler and your um, scoring tool and from the bottom left corner of your bottom flat, if you like, we're going to score from there up to the top left corner. Okay, now you need to make sure this is an accurate score line or as accurate as you can get. Then the other side of the bottom we're going to go up to the top right and score that bit. And again opposite. So we've got this little triangle going on. Can you see there how I scored that? So we've got the triangle from that half triangle that side and then this one. And we're going to do that all the way along. So from the bottom to the top 
part. And this ruler isn't the best because it for some reason leaves dirty marks when I score. I do need to get a new ruler and invest in one. This has even got measurements look that are worn off. <laughs> so I need to invest in a new ruler. Okay. And then obviously when we get to this last piece here, we've got our tab. Now I want you to score this one because you are going to need to. And you're literally going from top left to bottom right, scoring on that bit there. Okay. And now I want to burnish these triangles. And Caroline described it the best in her video that you're going to be folding from pattern to pattern. So we're going to fold this over and these end ones are harder because you've got to remember you've got that little bit of card at the top and if it isn't quite folded nicely it will look a bit of a disaster like mine. So remember to fold and burnish pattern to pattern all the way along these lines that you have just created. All the way, give them a good score. Like I said, it makes all the difference for this project. And it is a little bit more of a, an effort, but trust me, it is worth it in the end. And then obviously when you get to the last ones, even on this tab, as fiddly as it is, just to get that corner nicely folded, it's worth it. Okay, now what I did find was that these are now sitting proud and I want them the opposite way. So I'm literally just going to use my nail to fold those vertical straight lines and reburnish those. It just kind of helps it when you come to do the last part of the box which is already clearly taking beautiful shape here okay so unfortunately your tab will look a little tired and a little bit messy but that's not an issue because it's going to be hidden so whatever glue you're using tear and tape or wet glue it doesn't matter put it all over that tab there I've just found a new way of storing my Tombow while I'm using it. Look, stick it in some ribbon. <laughs> Genius. Okay, so I pro people probably know about that and have known about that forever, but I'm just slow at catching up on things. So we're literally just going to fold this over now and adhere that together. And just make sure that that's stuck. Obviously, if you're using tear and tape you won't need to fiddle quite as much and then to be fair when I started this one I start with this one because it's just a little thicker and a bit more fiddly and what you do need to do now is push the middle in and pinch the sides together okay now this bit as I say does become messy because you've got more card um, I just kind of use my nail to help it along and once it's in place you can put it flat and burnish it again and again I just worked my way round push that part in and squeeze those pieces together it is a little bit fiddly until it starts to go the way you want it to and once it starts there we go you can then just get that bone folder in there and fold them in. Then hopefully this should be the last one. Okay, so back to that unsightly one that's doubled because of the tab. So this is now the back, because you've got your lid here. This is the back. So Tombow going on this one. Again, if you want to use tear and tape, you can. 
I prefer wet glue for this because you need it for that little bit of movement. So you're going to push these bits both in, or one in, whichever way you feel, and then literally fold that one over. So this is now folded nicely. My squares are sitting pretty much together. Give them a good press, just get that glue working. And then again, I'm leaving this one till last because this will be the front. So then I need some more glue on the back of here. And I'm gonna tuck and fold this one in. And again, I'm using my thumb. Oh, sorry, completely off camera. Fold this one over and then I'm using my thumb and my finger here to hold it in line. Just so, because it'll tend to want to switch ways and it can become a nuisance. So, get that glue just moving around. And this is why I prefer wet glue. It gives you a chance to just slip and slide those pieces. And then obviously the last one, pop some Tombow on here again. Now I don't go all the way to the end because the lid does actually just sit slightly shorter. But I'm going to put my hand inside ready for this one. And then I'm just simply squeezing those last pieces together and folding the box over. And then you can just pop your hands inside and just make sure that all of those pieces are where they should be. Again, give it a press, pop it down on the desk. And then obviously you can see why that's not sitting as nicely as it should, but but there is your box and you can see your folds on inside and that is your box made up. So I'm just going to grab a couple of little box boxes of Smarties to pop inside. You can get a third one in if you tilt the Smarties forward and drop it in. However, the top just bulges slightly but obviously if you're putting ribbon on you won't notice it but I think it pushes the box out of shape so I'm just sticking with two and there's your box all made up so my ribbon <coughs> excuse me I've gone a bit <coughs> a bit croaky so I'm going to wrap my box up and again oops this would also help again if you've got those three three boxes of Smarties in there. Um, this will just help hold it in place. So I'm just going to wrap this around. Oh my goodness. All fingers and thumbs. Okay, that's better. So wrap my ribbon round and tie a bow. My beautiful ombre ribbon. Oh, okay, this bow's not playing the game, is it? That one I did first time, can you believe it? And it sat beautifully. This one? No, I'm going to have one more go, one more quick go at making this bow a little quicker a little prettier but I'm not fiddling with it for too long there we go that's better patience okay just neaten those ends off that one's okay actually and there's my beautiful box and then I'm just going to decorate it so I have some whisper white and some calypso coral so I've got my oh in fact we were going with this one weren't we one and a half inch circle punch for that one and then I have my one and a quarter circle punch and some whisper white and I'm going again with sweets for you on my whisper white and it just just one and a half inch sorry no one and a quarter and it's literally just touching the sides there. 
and then I'm just going to pop the dimensional on the back of there and that will go on there and then I popped a couple on the back of here and then I popped this one on the front there and then to finish it off I used the lovely Gingham Gala adhesive backed ribbons, uh, ribbons, <laughs> sequins which luckily have Calypso Coral and Lemon Lime Twist in and so I just added a couple of little flowers to the top. Obviously if you're making them for a male or for a boy you could just use the plain sequins. And there they are, my sweet treat sloping boxes. Hope you like them, hope you enjoy giving them to someone and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye!